Recently, I conducted a poll on Twitter um, asking whether they wanted the next YouTube video to be about cryoglobulins or SIADH, and the people have spoken. They selected SIADH, and my friend Adam requested I teach about SIADH to the tune of Hamilton. Uh, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> if this video gets 50,000 likes, Welcome back, clinical problem solvers. It's Prof. Rez. I am a clinician in Chicago who loves learning and teaching. In these episodes, we're going to focus on understanding over memorization. And today's topic is SIADH, the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. First, let me list all the abnormalities that leads to the diagnosis of SIADH. It's going to be a low serum osmolality, low serum sodium, the hyponatremia, high urine osmolality, high urine sodium, and low serum uric acid. And now let's explain each of these abnormalities. The low serum osmolality and the low serum sodium is easy to understand. If you have inappropriate levels of ADH, the ad hydration hormone, you're gonna see a dilution of the serum osmolality and the serum sodium. Why is the urine osmolality elevated in SIADH? Again, ADH is acting on the nephron to reabsorb water, so what's left behind is concentrated, therefore having a high urine osmolality. What about the urine sodium? Why is that elevated in SIADH? Well, remember, in SIADH, these patients are euvolemic to hypervolemic. So as you reabsorb water and you expand the extracellular fluid volume, this causes the, the cells in the atria to also stretch, which prompts them to release the natriuretic peptide, leading to natriuresis or loss of sodium in the urine. And that's why the urine sodium is elevated. What about uric acid handling? This is such a helpful um, value when you're considering the diagnosis of SIADH. The uric acid, the amount that you excrete in the urine, increases in the setting of SIADH. Basically what controls reabsorption of uric acid is the extracellular fluid volume. So the higher the volume, as occurs in SIDH, the more uric acid you excrete in your urine. If you're excreting a lot of uric acid in the urine, what happens to the serum uric acid? It's low, so typically patients with SIADH have a serum uric acid of less than four. So, so to summarize, what are the, what's the metabolic profile of SIADH? Low serum osmolality, hyponatremia, high urine osmolality, high urine sodia, high fractional excretion of uric acid, and low serum uric acid. An easy way to remember this is that everything in the serum is low, everything in the urine is high in the setting of SIDH. What's on the differential diagnosis in patients with SIDH that can mimic this metabolic profile? Hypothyroidism, adrenal insufficiency. So it's these endocrinopathies all in the downward direction, adrenal insufficiency and hypothyroidism. So that's why we send those labs when we're considering the diagnosis of SIADH. Cerebral salt wasting is, is difficult to distinguish from SIADH, and we're not gonna dive into that. And then the last diagnosis to consider is hydrochlorothiazide therapy. And that serum uric acid in the setting of hydrochlorothiazide therapy is elevated. Now that we've learned how to recognize SIADH and understand why the abnormalities occur, this is just the start of the diagnostic journey. Now you have to identify why is this happening? So as opposed to just treating the hyponatremia, which now you should know how to treat it because if the problem is too much water, you're gonna ask the patient to drink less fluid. Not only less water, less fluid. Because even if they drink Gatorade, they're gonna reabsorb all the water from the Gatorade and dump out the salt. So they have to drink less fluid. So what are some of the causes of SIADH? Well, the most common is pain. So someone who just came from an operation or is in severe pain, they'll start releasing ADH. Someone with nausea will start releasing ADH. Other causes include problems within the brain. So anything from infection to bleed can result in SIADH. Problems in the lung, pneumonia, can result in SIADH. Um, 
And additionally, medications like SSRIs and anti-epileptic drugs can lead to SIDH. And finally, cancers, specifically small cell cancers, can release um, the antidiuretic hormone. We're coming on the five minutes. I wanna give you a teaser for the next session. This, this teaser is, can you have SIADH with zero levels of ADH in the blood? Please comment below. And just because I love you, uh, well, I don't really love you, but just because you are who you are, um, I'm gonna do this, okay? Here we go, Adam. Drink less, eat more. <laughs> Remember what they said. <laughs>